Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on apnea and hypoventilation. Arterial blood gases during apnea. PaO2. In obstructed apnea, the basal requirements for oxygen for adults is around 250 ml per minute and the FRC in an adult is 2 to 2.5 liters, 21% of which is oxygen. If a patient has a totally obstructed airway, oxygen reserves will be exhausted in approximately 2 minutes and PaO2 will fall from 100 mm mercury to 37 mm mercury. Lung volume also falls. The decrease in lung volume amounts to the difference between the oxygen uptake and CO2 output. Pre-oxygenation significantly delays desaturation should apnea occur by increasing oxygen reserves. Non-obstructed apnea. If the airway is patent, lung volume does not reduce as ambient gas is drawn into the lungs by mass movement down the trachea. If the ambient gas is room air, hypoxia will occur as quickly as in obstructed apnea. But if the ambient gas is 100% oxygen, theoretically it will take 100 minutes before hypoxia supervenes, according to Prof. J.F. Nunn, assuming that the patient has been pre-oxygenated with 100% oxygen prior to the apnea episode. The rate of oxygen desaturation depends on alveolar oxygen, FRC, and oxygen consumption. Oxygen reserves are located mainly in the alveoli. Without pre-oxygenation with 100% oxygen, circulating oxygen is adequate to maintain metabolism for only 2-3 to three minutes. With pre-oxygenation with 100% oxygen, alveolar air is replaced with 100% oxygen and circulating oxygen will be adequate to maintain metabolism for 8 to 10 minutes. Lung volume. FRC decreases in certain conditions such as pregnancy, obesity, lung disease and FRC is decreased or exceeded by closing capacity in people aged 0 to 6 years old and over 44 years old in the supine position. Oxygen consumption increases in children, pregnancy, hyperthyroidism, sepsis, paraxia, malignant hyperthermia, etc. and decreases in hypothermia, mixed edema, use of anesthetic agent. The rate of oxygen desaturation will increase in situations of increased oxygen consumption decreased lung volume, and decreased oxygen reserves. PaCO2 During apnea, carbon dioxide elimination stops and PaCO2 increases at the rate of between 3 to 6 mm mercury per minute. This rise may be lower in patients with low metabolic rates such as in patients undergoing brainstem death test. Non-obstructed apnea. CO2 still rises because CO2 elimination via convection or diffusion is opposed by mass inward movement of ambient gas. The consequences of hypercapnia. Increased CO2 in the blood results in respiratory acidosis and negative inotropy occurs at 67 to 75 mm mercury. There is increase in cerebral blood flow by 7.5 mL per 100 gram per minute for each 1 kPa rise from baseline, or in other words, increase in 1 mL per 100 gram per minute per 100 mm mercury rise from the baseline PaCO2 to a maximum vasodilation at 78 millimeters mercury. CO2 narcosis occurs at 90 mmHg PaCO2 in non-habituated patients. 
PaO2 decreases as PaCO2 increases. The alveolar gas equation is PaO2 equals to PiO2 minus PaCO2 divided by RQ. It is used to estimate the PaO2 of a perfect alveolus with varying FiO2. PaO2 is the alveolar oxygen partial pressure. PaCO2 is the alveolar CO2 partial pressure and RQ stands for respiratory quotient. PiO2 is FiO2 times atmospheric pressure minus SVPH2O where FiO2 is the inspired oxygen fraction, PATM is the atmospheric pressure and SVPH2O is the saturated vapor pressure of water at 47 mm mercury at 37 Celsius. SVP H2O in the airways is subtracted from the atmospheric pressure before multiplying by FiO2 because FiO2 only applies to the portion of inhaled mixture that is dry gas. Alveolar carbon dioxide partial pressure is assumed to be in equilibrium with the arterial carbon dioxide partial pressure. R varies according to the dominant energy substrate in the diet. The normal RQ is 0.8. Pure carbohydrate metabolism RQ equals to 1.0. Applications of the alveolar gas equation. If a patient who is breathing room air has a alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide of 90 mmHg, their alveolar partial pressure of oxygen will fall to only 37 mm mercury. Under normal conditions, PaO2 is 13.35 kPa. A difference of plus minus 2 kPa is allowable due to VQ mismatch and shunt. Thirteen point three kPa equals to hundred millimeters mercury. The blood stores of carbon dioxide is one hundred and twenty liters, and oxygen is one point five liters. Apneic oxygenation. In brainstem death testing, it is used during the apnea test for brainstem death testing. The goal of PaCO2 is 50 mm mercury. Oxygenation can be achieved by simple insufflation. Apneic oxygenation is also used during airway endoscopy and during critical points of complex upper airway surgery. Hypoventilation. The alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide equals to carbon dioxide output divided by alveolar ventilation. And this means that if the alveolar ventilation halves, the PaCO2 will double. According to the alveolar gas equation, a hypoventilating patient who is breathing air will become hypoxic and increasing FiO2 to 30% will increase the PaO2 by almost 67 mmHg while having no effect on the alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Ventilatory failure might not be apparent in the presence of supplemental oxygen as oxygen saturations will remain high even in the presence of a high PaCO2. Post-operative apnea Potential causes include persistent narcosis secondary to opioid administration, residual neuromuscular blockade, hypocapnia, severe hypercapnia with CO2 narcosis, hypothermia, cardiac arrest, stroke, etc. Hypoxia is the condition in which there is an insufficient supply of oxygen to the tissues to maintain aerobic respiration. 
Cellular ischemia when there is imbalance between the supply of oxygen and the demand of tissues and the critical value seems to be 8 to 10 mL of oxygen per 100 grams per minute. Hypoxia may be generalized or regional and can be classified into hypoxemic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia, ischemic hypoxia, and histotoxic hypoxia. Hypoxemic hypoxia is a condition where there is insufficient tissue oxygenation arising from an abnormal reduction in the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. A patient can be hypoxic yet not hypoxemic. Examples include all types of diffusion defects or ventilation perfusion mismatch, hypoventilation, breathing hypoxic mixtures, etc. Anemic hypoxia is a condition where there is insufficient tissue oxygenation arising from a failure of the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood in the face of a normal partial pressure of oxygen. Examples include severe chronic anemia, carbon monoxide poisoning, meth hemoglobinemia. Ischemic hypoxia is a condition where there is insufficient tissue oxygenation arising from a failure of perfusion. Examples include septic shock, cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, Raynaud's syndrome, and Burgess disease. Histotoxic hypoxia results when there is insufficient tissue oxygenation in the face of normal oxygen delivery due to the failure of oxidative phosphorylation. It is the inability of tissues to utilize the oxygen that is being supplied, such as during cyanide poisoning. These are my references. Thank you.